friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. You are in store for a fantastic WW Weekly meal prep. I am making a breakfast, a lunch, and a sweet treat, a really low point delicious sweet treat. So if you want to see what I have in store for you for this week's meal prep, just stay tuned. <music> For my breakfast this week, I'm gonna be making baked blueberry ginger pancakes. I cannot wait for this. I'm gonna pair this with some eggs and some fruit. Oh, cannot wait. So let me show you what is in our blueberry ginger pancakes. I'm gonna be doing a mix of the Bisquick Heart Smart. The actual recipe wants you to use flour and baking powder, but I'm actually gonna do half of this Bisquick Heart Smart pancake mix, and then I'm gonna do half of my Birch Benders pancake mix with protein. And that's going to actually add a little bit of protein to my breakfast as well. So you can do it either way. I'm just choosing to use these two products instead of the flour and the leveling agent. So Birch Benders protein mix and Bisquick Heart Smart. Stevia in the raw. I'm gonna be using some Kroger Carb Master Milk, sugar-free syrup, salt, ginger, eggs, light butter, and of course, some blueberries. So let's get started on our breakfast. So to get started on our blueberry pancakes, we are going to add our one and a half cups of milk. We're also going to add two eggs. These are room temperature, so make sure that you take your eggs out in time that they are room temperature. And then we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of melted butter. And we're just going to give this a mix just until everything is nice and combined. Once you have your egg mixture nice and mixed together, we're gonna go ahead and add in our pancake mix. So remember, I have one cup of the Birch Benders Protein and I have one cup of Bisquick Heart Smart. To that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of my sweetener. I'm also going to add just a little bit of salt and that kind of helps bring out those flavors and ties the whole recipe together. And then I'm also going to add in my ginger and it calls for about one and a half teaspoons of ginger. So we're gonna add all of that in and then once again, we're gonna give this a good stir until everything is mixed together and then we'll be ready to put this into our pan and get it into the oven. Go ahead and grab out your 9x9 baking pan. You're going to want to spray that with some non-stick cooking spray. So get a nice coat on that. And then we are ready to add in our pancake mix. So go ahead and just add that in and get it as even as you can over the bottom of your pan. And then our last step is we're going to go ahead and top it with our blueberries. So we have our pancake mix perfectly in the bottom of our pan, and we're gonna go ahead and add our blueberries. Now the recipe wants you to add about two cups. I'm just going to cover the entire top of my pancake mix here with the blueberries. I'm not too worried if I use a little more um, because blueberries, of course, are zero points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my blueberries, and then this is going to go into the oven at 350 degrees until you can insert a toothpick and it comes out clean. Your cooking times, of course, will vary depending on your oven. I do get a lot of questions about that and I do have a convection oven. So mine is going to cook a little bit different than your standard oven. So just kind of keep that in mind when you are following the recipe. So let's go ahead and get this deliciousness into the oven. While our pancakes are in the oven, I'm gonna get my syrup ready. So I'm gonna be using these cute little reusable containers. They have little plastic lids. I just throw these into the dishwasher. I picked these up at Home Goods. So these are great just so you're not throwing away the plastic ones over and over again. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar-free syrup, probably a couple of tablespoons, not even enough to add a point to our pancake bake. Pop the lids on these and we'll get these set aside and ready Ready to go in to our meal prep container. Look at this blueberry ginger pancake bake. You guys, it smells so good. You can smell the spicy of the ginger, the sweet of the blueberries. This looks amazing. So I'm going to let this cool for just a few minutes. We're going to slice this into six servings. I'll get it into my meal prep container and I'll be back to show you exactly what I'm having for breakfast. 
So here is my breakfast for the week. I am so incredibly excited for this. I am going to pair this with some eggs, but I'll just be cooking the eggs right before I eat them. I didn't pre-cook those. So let me show you exactly what I am having. First of all, look at how good that looks. It is delicious. I tried just a little taste of it. You can taste that spiciness of the ginger, but it balances it out with the sweetness of the blueberries. And I did buy the wild blueberries. They're really small, but they're usually a little sweeter. And this is outstanding. So there is one slice of the ginger blueberry pancake bake. You saw me package up my syrup. And since we're on a blueberry kick, I decided to have a little extra bag of blueberries as well. And that will be my first fruit of the day. So one sixth of the ginger blueberry pancake bake is only six smart points. So with two eggs, a little bit of syrup and some fruit, this is going to be only a six smart point breakfast. For my lunches this week, I'm gonna be making a sun-dried tomato feta stuffed Greek meatball with a lemon sauce, sounds amazing. And I'm gonna pair that with a vegetable and some roasted potatoes. So let me show you first what is in our meatballs and then I'll show you kind of what I'm doing as my side dishes. You'll need some minced garlic, Worcestershire sauce, non-fat Greek yogurt, salt and pepper, oregano. I'm gonna be using the Trader Joe's fat-free feta cheese. 99% extra lean ground turkey, a fresh lemon, and then I'm adding some sun-dried tomatoes. I picked these up at Trader Joe's. They have nothing added to them, so they are zero smart points. My veggie is going to be these Flavor Pack Pacific Blend. You guys know I love this brand of vegetables, so I'm just going to have a side of those. And then we'll be roasting up some potatoes. I'll show you how I'm going to season those in the oven, and we're gonna have that along with our meatballs. So the first thing we need to do is I'm gonna roughly chop some sun-dried tomatoes. I'm also going to dice up my potatoes and put them in a bowl here to season. We're also going to zest and juice our lemon. So let's get everything chopped up so we can start on these meatballs. our meatballs I'm gonna be doing mine just a little bit different than the recipe the recipe wants you to stuff your meatballs with feta since I'm using crumbled feta I'm not going to do that I'm just actually going to mix the feta in here with all of the rest of my meatball ingredients so I have one pound of my 99% fat free turkey I'm going to put in two-thirds cup of my crumbled feta two cloves of garlic I'm gonna add some oregano. It wants about one and a half teaspoons per the recipe. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball the oregano. And then I'm also going to add about one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And we're gonna grind in a little bit of pepper here. It says 20 grinds are to your liking. So again, you would just wanna do this to your taste buds. I like a lot of pepper, so I'm gonna put quite a bit into mine. And then lastly, we're gonna put in a little bit of salt. Give this a good mix before we add in our lemon zest and our lemon juice. So get that nice and mixed together so that it feta and all those spices are nice and incorporated together. Once you have your meat mixture nice and combined, this looks really, really good with that feta in there. We're gonna go ahead and add our sun-dried tomatoes. And I just kind of added what I wanted into my meatballs. We're also going to add about two teaspoons of lemon juice. And we're going to add about half of our lemon zest. You wanna reserve the rest of your lemon zest for your sauce that's gonna go over these meatballs. So get that nice and stirred together and then we'll be ready to roll these into meatballs and get these cooking on the stove. Go ahead and grab out whatever pan it is that you're gonna cook your meatballs in. I did spray it with some non-stick cooking spray. Here's our meatball mixture, this looks delicious. So now it's time to dig in with your hands and we are just going to form these into meatballs. You can do whatever size that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make mine 
about that big and I think that's the perfect size and then I'll just divide out the number of meatballs I get out of the batch for the number of servings and figure the points based on that but I will give you kind of a heads up these are probably going to be zero point meatballs if anything they may be a point with the feta cheese so I just have to kind of figure out exactly how many meatballs I get and yeah we're looking at a zero or one smart point meatball so let's get these rolled out and into our pan So here are our meatballs. Look at these. Yum. So I'm going to go ahead and get these on the stove. And while these are starting to cook down, let's season up our potatoes, get them on a sheet pan and get those into the oven as well. So for our potatoes, I have them here in a bowl. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to our potatoes. And then we're also going to add my very favorite seasoning in the whole world, and that is the Dax seasoning. This is the original red. These are amazing because they are no salt, no MSG, nothing artificial. So these are great if you're watching your salt the day before weigh-in, but the flavor of these is so good. It's so strong and pure and fresh and real, and they are really, truly an amazing spice. They have over 20 on their website. I love the original red, the green zest, the pumpkin spice really all of them are so good I do have a 10% off discount code for Dax it is here on the screen for you not only will it give you 10% off it will also give you free shipping so head over to Dax check them out you will not be sorry and again no salt you guys so great if you're watching your salt or before weigh-in so today I'm using the original red this one does have a little bit of a kick to it which I like you don't need very much because the spice is so concentrated and real you don't need as much when you're seasoning your food which is also a good thing so I'm gonna give this kind of a quick stir get the salt pepper and Dax kind of mixed together and then I'm going to just coat them lightly with my nonstick cooking spray and again, give that another quick mix. And then we're ready to put these into the oven on our sheet pan at 375 until they are roasted completely through. So let me get these onto the sheet pan and I'll be back to show you them before they go into the oven. So I went ahead and lined my sheet pan here with some parchment paper. And I'm just going to drop my potatoes. Ooh, look at that. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and move that right over here. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and drop our potatoes onto the parchment paper on our sheet pan. This just allows for a little bit faster, easier cleanup. So get those laid out as evenly as you can into a single layer. They'll just cook and roast up a little bit better. And then these are going in at 375 until they are roasted through. Our meatballs are coming along nicely. Look at how good these are looking. They're starting to brown up and get cooked all the way through and then also we have our potatoes roasting away Woo, you're steamy there you go roasting away in the oven so these should be done in just a few minutes so let's put together the sauce so let's put together the sauce for our meatballs. So in my bowl here, I have three quarters of a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. To that, I'm going to add what was left of the lemon zest. It wants about a teaspoon, so that's about what's left here. We're also going to add one clove of minced garlic and just about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then this is what is going to go on top of our meatballs. So we're gonna get this stirred together. I'm just going to wrap my bowl up here in some saran wrap and just keep this in the refrigerator. And each day when I go to eat my meatballs, I'll add a little bit of the sauce to the top, but that is the sauce for the meatballs. So our meatballs are done. These look so good. So it looks like I'm gonna get four per day. So I'm just gonna go ahead and in each of my meal prep containers here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my four meatballs. And then the other two container sides I'll use for the potatoes and the vegetables. And that allows some room for me to go ahead and add that sauce on when I'm ready to eat. So I'm just gonna fill these with four meatballs per meal prep container. So I have my meatballs on the large side of my meal prep container. While my potatoes finish cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and fill one of the small compartments here with my veggie blend. And I'm just gonna make sure that I get enough per uh, container that this bag stretches out for all of my meal prep containers. So I'm gonna get the one side filled with vegetables and then we'll be ready to put in our potatoes as soon as they come out of the oven. 
Our potatoes are cooked through. You guys, these look super good. Look at how crispy and delicious these look. So I'm gonna divide these evenly into my five meal prep containers, and I'll be back to show you exactly what I'm having for lunch and give you the smart points. So here is my lunch for the week. This looks so good. I cannot wait to have my lunch. So let me show you what I'm having. So each day I'll be having four of my feta meatballs. I'm going to put a little bit of that delicious yogurt lemon garlic sauce on top. I'm just gonna wrap this in saran wrap and throw it in my fridge. And I'll just top my meatballs with a little bit of it each day. I have some frozen vegetables. I'll add a little bit of spray butter, salt and pepper to those. I have one fifth of my roasted potatoes. And then each day I'm going to have one of those huge red yummy pears that I picked up at Costco. And I'm also going to, for dessert, have one of my sweet nothings. This is the caramel pecan cluster. These are outstanding. They taste like a chocolate that you'd pick up at a fancy chocolate store. They're so good and for one piece, it's only one smart point. If you go up to two pieces, it becomes three smart points. But it's a great little sweet treat to have after lunch. So I'm going to have one piece for one point. So my meatballs technically are zero smart points, but I'm going to go ahead and count one point just to compensate for the feta cheese. You could do them as zero or one, whatever you prefer, but I'm sticking with one. And then it is three smart points for my roasted potatoes and one smart point for my sweet nothing. Everything else is zero. So my entire lunch is one for the meatballs, three for the potatoes and one for the sweet nothings. So four, oh, I'm sorry, five smart points total. For a sweet treat this week, I'm making whoopie pies. I am so excited. I bought a whoopie pan on Amazon and I found this fantastic dessert recipe. And wait until you guys hear the smart points. You can have this deliciousness for such a low amount of smart points, it's crazy. This is a Mud Hustler recipe. I found this off of his website and I copied it pretty much exactly. So I'm gonna show you exactly what is in our whoopie pies and then let's get started because I can't wait to try these. First, you're going to need some protein powder. I'm gonna be using the Devotion Nutrition Protein Powder. This is the brownie batter. This is exactly what it's called for in the recipe. If you do tweak the protein powder you're using, you may need to recalculate the smart points. This protein powder is so low, I don't know if it would increase the overall points at the end if you did use a different powder. I would highly recommend the Devotion. This is the best protein powder on the market. It is sugar-free. It has two grams of MCT per serving, which is a little bit of healthy fat. Gluten-free, it has a six enzyme formula, and the best part is it is bloat-free. So it's not going to make you bloat like a lot of the other protein powders on the market do. So again, this is the Devotion. They also have the Angel Food Cake, which is outstanding. You know I use that all the time in baking. I love making protein shakes out of this. It really just truly is the best protein powder. I do have a 10% off discount code for Devotion. I will put it here on the screen. Make sure that you click the link in the description box and enter the code from there. Otherwise, it will not apply the discount. So again, use the code down in the description box. So of course, I'm gonna be using the Devotion Brownie Batter Protein Powder, unsweetened applesauce, Jet Puff Marshmallow Cream, whipped topping, eggs, espresso powder. Espresso just enhances the flavor of the chocolate. So highly recommend using this. These are these single serve little packets, so it makes it super easy. And then of course, some baking powder. So let's get started on these whoopie pies. First, we're gonna put together the actual cookie portion of our whoopie pie. So the first thing we're going to do is add our devotion protein powder. And we want two scoops or two servings. So it is quite a large scoop, so we're gonna go ahead and add Add two of those. One scoop of the Devotion Brownie Batter Protein Powder is only two smart points. And it's, I mean, look at this scoop. It's a good size scoop. So first we're gonna go ahead and add in our Devotion. To that, we're gonna add one teaspoon of baking powder. We're also going to add one tablespoon of espresso powder or basically one little packet. One egg. And lastly, one quarter cup of unsweetened applesauce. And then we're gonna give this a good mix until everything is nice and combined together. And then we'll pull out our whoopee pan pie, whoopee pie pan, that's a tongue twister. And we'll get this batter in there and it'll get, we'll get it into the oven. 
So here is the Whoopi Pie Pan that I purchased. This is from the company Sweet Creations. I bought this off of Amazon. It was really inexpensive, less than $10. It is linked down in my Amazon store below. So we're gonna use that. We're gonna spray it really good with some nonstick cooking spray because we don't want our whoopies to stick. So we're gonna go ahead and spray that. And then we are just going to spoon in our batter and we wanna be as even as we can with our batter. They will spread out and poof up because of the baking powder that's in there. But we wanna go ahead and scoop the batter into all 12 cavities of our pan, and then we'll get ready to get these into the oven. So here are our whoopie pies. I know they look a little bit lackluster, but they will spread out and kind of poof up and make a cookie for us. So I'm going to get these into the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. And of course, that does depend on your oven. And then while these are cooking, we're going to put together the filling. All right, for the filling in my bowl here, I have five tablespoons of softened light whipped topping. And this is the whipped topping that I used. To this, I'm going to add two tablespoons tablespoons of jet puffed marshmallow cream and then we are going to just mix this all together and then we are going to put this into the freezer to keep it nice and firm until our whoopie pies come out of the oven and this is the filling so yum whipped topping and marshmallow cream yes please so i'm going to get this all mixed together and throw this into the freezer while our whoopie pies continue to cook and here are our whoopie pies. So I did, while they were cooking, took a spoon and kind of flattened them out a little bit. They didn't fill the entire compartment, but you know, they're what a whoopie pie should look like, kind of a puck type of a cookie. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out of my pan and then we'll get ready to fill these and we'll plate them up and I'll show you exactly what these whoopie pies look like and that's when I'll give you the smart points. So here are our whoopie pies. So they turned out pretty good actually. They're nice and flat on the one side. I have my mix here. We are going to fill our whoopie pies and we need enough of the filling for six whoopie pies. So we're gonna add one sixth of our filling and then we literally are going to top it with the second half of the whoopie pie look at that yum and i'm going to get these all done and then i'm going to store mine in the freezer but i'll plate them up and show you what they look like here are our whoopie pies these you guys look so good i cannot wait to dig in so you have two of the whoopie pie cookies filled with that delicious whipped topping and marshmallow cream and guess what one whoopie pie full of this delicious filling is only one smart point. One smart point. And you're also getting a big dose of protein from that protein powder. So highly recommend this recipe. Cannot wait to dig in. I am going to store mine in the freezer. I'm gonna individually wrap them. And then when I want one, I can just pop it out and eat it. Oh, so excited about this, you guys. Pick up that Devotion Brownie batter and make yourself these delicious whoopie pies. So here are my snacks this week. I'm changing it up just a little bit. Of course, I'm going to have a Built Bar as my morning snack. You know I have one of these every single morning. It keeps me full. Here's that little bit of a sweet tooth. So good. So I'm excited because, as you know, I ordered two full boxes of the new Coconut Almond because it tastes like a Almond Joy. It is that delicious. So I have one of those. I have one of the Built Burner and Caramel Brownie. This is just one that I had on hand. These are no longer available. The Banana Chocolate Cream, this one is delicious. Tastes like a chocolate covered banana from the fair. I have a Cinnamon Chocolate Cream, again, no longer available. And then a Black Cherry, which literally tastes like a chocolate covered cherry. I do have to say though, this Coconut Almond that's new, my all-time favorite these bars are only three smart points they are loaded with protein anywhere from 15 to 18 grams depending on the bar that you're choosing they have tons of fiber some have seven grams six grams they keep you full and again three smart points you guys they taste like a candy bar so if you're interested in built bar or you definitely want to pick up the coconut almond and there's also a new water enhancer called built boost that is out head on over to builtbar.com use my code here on the screen you'll get 10 percent off and free shipping you can't beat it you guys check out built bar so this is my morning snack for the afternoon i'm just going to have one of these little packs of halloween Uts pretzels 
they're only one smart point and they are super good they're the most salty buttery pretzels i love them and then you saw me haul these blue diamond bold wasabi and soy sauce almonds i am so excited about these you guys i can not wait they're so good so i'm going to have some of these now depending on the number of nuts that you have you can change your smart points so one serving which is one ounce or 28 nuts i uh, highly recommend you weigh versus count out your nuts you generally get a little more is five smart points but i will put here on the screen some other options for you because if you just reduce the number of nuts that you're having you can reduce the smart points it's a great snack full of protein full of a healthy fat it'll keep you full and this wasabi soy sauce flavor is so good so i'm going to be having some of those i'm not sure how many it just kind of depends on how many points i want to spend on a snack so blue diamond almonds little uts pretzels and of course my favorite thing ever the built bar these are my snacks for this next week thank you for joining me on another ww weekly meal prep these recipes you guys were so good i seriously cannot wait for all of my meals it's such a great feeling to meal prep something that you're excited to eat all week long because as you know i do eat my meal prep throughout the entire week speaking of meal prep i get this question a lot i'm always asked if i freeze my meal prep or just keep it in the fridge i simply keep it in the fridge because it lasts the whole week i eat it every day so i just pull it out of the fridge and warm it up you can freeze most of my meal preps if you're not planning to eat it within the upcoming week i would say if you're going to be waiting a little longer to finish your meal preps you probably should throw them in the freezer just to preserve them a little bit more so that's a question that i get a lot so all the recipes for this week's meal prep are down in the description box below with any modifications that I made. Also in the description box are all of my discounts for all of the different WW staples that you can purchase at a discount with my links and codes. Again, they're down in the description box below. Also my Facebook group, my PO box, you name it, it's all down below for you. Thank you again so much for watching. If you're new, make sure that you subscribe, hit that little bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video thumbs up this one. It really helps my channel. I really appreciate it. And comment down below. Let me know what recipe or recipes you're most excited about. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.